Good morning, Glad Tidings. We are so glad that you are here in this place today and we can worship God together. You know, I, I have been praying this week um, over the message that God's prepared for us. And I have been praying this week over all of you guys as a lot of you have known in situations going what, I, what, we're, what me and Megan are doing this next week. But, you know, I want a couple more weeks of just worshiping with my family and just coming and just interceding heaven and just calling down heaven and believing what God can do. I believe today as I've been praying for this service that miracles are going to happen. Lives are going to be changed. Chains, chains are going to be breaking off because that's the only way I know my Jesus can do. And so I want to encourage you to stand up. I'm going to pray. We're just going to dive into worship and we're just going to go after him today. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. You are worthy of all honor and all glory, Jesus. And I ask an invitation for you to show up in this place, in these moments, God, where you are just glorified and where you are praised and where you deserve all the honor and all the glory, Father. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. You are welcome here in this place today, God. We just worship you today. Go ahead and worship team. Just lead us.
with you, Lord. That we can come, we can worship you, Lord Jesus. You are God who hears us, you know us, Lord God. We just thank you so much, Lord God. I thank you so much, Lord, for your amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
are truly great.
going through the altars, that people are coming to the altars to spend time with you. And I thank you, Jesus. But I feel in this room, if you're going through a situation, you personally or somebody in your family, you need to get up here and pray for them. You need to get up here and praise God because He can do a miracle. I'm learning something through my own life lately that I need to praise through the storm because when the storm I'm going through, God is still going to get the glory and I'm going to praise Him through that. So today I encourage you, if you have a need, a physical need, a financial need, a spiritual need, come to these altars. God's shoulders are broad enough and big enough to handle anything that you need to say to Him today. He loves you and He cares about you. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be to deliver. God has a plan for you. Sometimes you have to lay down what your plans are for yourself and ask God just to move. So I encourage you right now, congregation, if you need prayer, if somebody in your family needs prayer, let's start interceding for them right now. Let's start calling down heaven and having God meet them where they are today. Meet you where you are. Worship team, would you just sing this song one more time? Because we need God every hour, every day, every moment. Thank you, Jesus.
And we got to be thankful for whatever's going on. Or maybe some of you feel in this room that you don't know what's going on. You feel it feels it feels too clouded, or it feels too dark, or it feels too too hard. Something I've been learning these last two weeks, man. I got to praise Him no matter where I am because Amen. He's still worthy of our praise. Amen. That's right. He hasn't abandoned us. He hasn't left us. He cares about you. He knows those who are in the hospital right now. We are interceding right now for Richard. And we are asking, God, that you would just show up in that hospital room. Holy Spirit, right now, that you would just show up into that room and do a miracle, God. Because we know that you are the God of miracles. Amen. You are the God of the impossible. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for John and Pat Atwood, God. I pray, Jesus, right now, that you would continue to strengthen their bodies. Lord, heal their minds, God. Get rid of this cloud that they feel in their in their minds, God. Lord Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, come into that room yes, yes, and speak. Yes, yes, yes. And speak. Lord, Holy Spirit, come into that room and bring a miracle. Oh, Jesus, Thank Lord, you, Lord, I pray, God, over anybody else in this room who just needs a touch, God, that they would just reach out and grab a hold of your miracle for them today. Lord, we just thank you. And we just praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. All the time. More than we deserve. Amen. Amen. That's a great job, Gene. I like that. Thank you. So I do got a few announcements today. I promise you, I shouldn't make, be making promises, but I promise you, Pastor will be back next week. <laughs> Lord willing and uh, healthy. He's healthy, um, but you guys are stuck with me today. Um, Amen. So, get ready for you ready for that. that was coming. But, uh, I do got a few announcements I want to just make you aware of. We are still selling calendars. We still have a few. So if you haven't if you haven't picked up yours or you're like, hey, I just didn't sign up. I want to get one. Please come and grab one. See, my wife she'll be out in the foyer, and you can pick up one from her. She's the prettier one of the two of us. Okay. Uh, you're prettier than Pastor. Oh. Uh, wow. I'm not touching that one right now. Can you turn me up just just a hair? I feel like I'm. Um, also, I want to let you guys know we are collecting um, money. I don't like collecting money, but I like it for this project. We are collecting money for Sandy Poe. $6.50 would supply a gift or for a student in the Dominican Republic so that they can have a Christmas to remember. And if you haven't gave, um, please, today's the last due to, to give. We want to send that money off to San, uh, uh, Sandra Poe and uh, be able to give her so she can get time to get the gifts that, they could, that the kids need and want. So I'm happy we're doing that this year and we're going to bless a lot of kids, and we are responsible for that. Also, what I'm really excited about is on um, November 20th will be our Holiday Makers Market. Betty has put a lot of work, we have a lot of vendors, and you know what? How many of you guys have started shopping for Christmas? See, Megan? They started shopping for Christmas. Why won't you let me? Okay. Sorry. That's personal. Um, I want you guys to know there are going to be a lot of crafts, a lot of cool items. And come by, stop by. There are going to be food. I'm telling you, Lori and Pat and Betty are all, I'm already salivating on what the food and cakes and all those desserts will be like. But uh, come and just be a part of this vendor show. There's going to be a lot of cool things. A lot of people from the church are doing it. A lot of people outside the church. And we can love on them and bless them and encourage them. So God's going to do amazing things. And we're raising money for missions. So I always love raising money for missions. So amen. 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 All right. So would you guys bear with me for a minute before I start my message? I, um, last week, pastor threw me in the deep end a little bit. Called me Saturday and said, hey, I'm not feeling good. And I wasn't prepared to read something to you guys. Last week, a lot of you probably know, but next week will be my last Sunday. And I want to express it in a way that my heart has been wanting to say it. I've been working on this for a couple weeks, and it wasn't done last week. I want to read you guys this, because this is from my heart and Megan's heart. So, bear with me. Thank you all for the love and support over the years. The decision to step away from this great place was not a light or an easy one for me or Megan. We prayed and sought God. As I think back to starting my last week here, I think back to the first week. A lot of changes were coming, and a lot of ventures being on staff here. And if you know anything, being following Pastor Bill is an adventure. Yes, I said it. Adventure. The first time I ever preached up on this stage, 
is not when I first got here eight years ago. It was when in March, uh, March of 1999, I was a 13-year-old student doing fine arts. And when I stepped into this place my first week, something seemed familiar. I looked at that stage. It took me about a half a day to figure out that I preached when I was 13 years old on this stage. Wow. And it might be the last time I ever preach on this stage, so I'm going to leave you one with God's God blessing. But I've been so grateful over the years for all your relationships. People I've got to know in the last few months, the last few years. I have so many fond memories that just bless my heart. To all my youth leaders over the years until now, some are watching, some are not. I want to say thank you for joining the team. You make ministry fun. Teenagers are a lot of work sometimes, but they're a lot of fun and a lot of crazy. And then the team has to put up with my crazy, which is double that. So I just want to say thank you. You know, I got to handpick all my youth leaders, all but one. I'm trying to see if he, where he's at. Um, but he might not be in the room right now. And even though I didn't get to handpick him, I inherited him. So I want to thank you, Rob Gaither. You have been blessing. He's been in youth ministry longer than I have, so I take his uh, his thoughts really seriously. If you know him, that's yeah, not true, but uh, I love him to death. So I also want to thank Re uh, Rachel and William and Rebecca and my wife, who has been my team as, as of right now. A lot of you might not know this. I might do a good job, but I'm a very emotional man, and because I care about people and I care about this church, I hide it sometimes really well, but. What, what I've learned over the eight years is simply these things. We've had some wins. We've had some fun times. I've had some sad times. I've had some joyful experiences. And I just want to share a couple stories before I dive into the Word today. You know, a couple wins were, you know, these pie auctions I put on every year, they get bigger and better um, because I get smarter people around me, okay? And, uh, and going to camp with all of these amazing students over the years, one of the camp experiences I had was... It was, service was over. We already been in three hours worth of service. And long story short, I had 25 kids go to camp that year, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave the altar. So we missed all the food. We missed all the fun time. We were there till midnight praising and worshiping God. And I remember that night so fondly because kid, people, kids were being set free. Kids' hearts were being changed. I didn't say, hey, stay in the, stay in the, stay in the sanctuary. They did that on their own. And as a youth leader, my heart was just blessed. And they just kept on praying and interceding and things were just falling off their lives. And God can do great things at camp. And so I've seen it. And I've seen the power of camp. You know, I've also been on a youth mission trip to Atlanta, which was crazy. With a whole different youth group that was amazing. You know, I've had a lot of wins. I could share a lot more stories. Um, but you guys know there's never a dull moment with Pastor Bill, right? If you know him at all, if you're a first-time guest, I promise you, you will love him. And you will be like, What? Okay, so I didn't get his permission to share this story, but this story has lived in my mind for the last four to five years, and it's, it's crazy. So pastor calls me and um, our former church pastor up and says, hey, I need you to get to our house. I need you to help me move something. I'm like, okay, you know, you might want the children's pastor, but you don't want me. I'm not the strong guy. He's like, us three can do this. So we get to his house on the back of his bed of his truck. Is a safe. Not just a safe, a very big safe. And I'm like, Pastor, what are you doing? He goes, Us three are going to move it. I go, Have you seen me? Um, I'm just a guy with one hand, and I'm a guy that has no, no, no. He goes, We got this. I'm like, Do you have a plan to get this down? There is no ropes, no nothing. He's like, We're just going to pick it up. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, Pastor, how? And, and the chills pastor at the time, he's looking at, we're all looking at each other, and we're like, Okay, Pastor, here's one of your plans that has not been thought out very well. Um, so he's like, hey, let me, let me push it off the bed. As he, so he's going to get behind it, and he starts to push it, and he's grunting. I mean, I do not want to make that grunting noise because it lives in my mind too much. And he's like, oh! And he's not even budging. Oh! Okay, oh! And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So he's like, okay, I got this. I'm just going to lean my weight against the back of my truck. Now, if you know what's in the back of most trucks are windows. Oh. Um, and as he starts to push, me and, other me and the children pastor, we're trying to pull. He finally, at this point, we got a rope, and we're trying to pull, he's trying to push. All of a sudden, we just felt like a snap. And we're like, Pastor, you okay? His body weight could not hold the window. He was stuck in the back of the window. <laughs> and I said, 
I'm not going to lie to you, we had so many jokes, so many fat jokes that were going around like, <laughs> and I, for a couple weeks. And then, so he's never let that out of the bowl. And I told you, Pastor, I was going to embarrass you a little bit. But uh, that is one that would go down to me of pulling, pulling a safe. We did eventually get it in. Um, but next time he called, I said, Pastor, I'm pretty busy. I can't help you out anymore. Um, so, you know, doing ski trips, hanging out, you know, all these things. Spending time with amazing teenagers over the years have been my blessing. You know, last trunk or treat, I'm going to share one last story with you guys. Last trunk or treat, I encouraged my students to scare me. I told my students that if they could scare me, they'd get a prize. And there is a, I see two of them in here. And, I'm, I, and uh, I won't mention them by name, the Powell family. And I remember they, they told me one of the friends had been abducted and they hit, they hit her and they're asking, they're like, we can't find her, she's gone, she's missing. I'm like, okay, call her cell phone. You know, all these natural youth pastor things. Call her cell phone. Okay, let's call the police. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll get on that. And so I'm running around, my head chopped off, last uh, trunk or tree. Long story short, they hid her in a trunk. Okay, I don't know why you have to hit her in a trunk. They hit her in a trunk and they scared me. They scared me. For like an hour, I was having almost a heart attack. But you know, looking back, that was a fun memory. In the moment, not so much. So, um, also, we, I've had some sad times here. I've had some emotional moments. And it's usually been over losing some great people in this house. Losing great people in this Glad Titans church. Um, here's a few that I, I, I I'm not going to name all of them for time's sake. But Lila, do you remember Lila Rankin? She was a sweet lady. Yeah. She was my girlfriend, my grandma girlfriend, what's I called. She was my girlfriend before Megan, and she would make the whole world know that's my man. Okay? Yeah. Um, and I love her and miss her to death. And uh, Marlene, who would sit out on that, sit out in the foyer, we would talk for hours before Sunday school about life and about ministry. You know, who would talk to me and just share life with me. And uh, she's pretty hard on me, but I appreciated it. Um, Howard, Rob, who was so funny and honorary. If you remember who Howard was oh, yeah. years ago, I mean, I would sit and try and take him seriously, and he'd be like, don't take me seriously. I'm just going to make jokes all the way. <laughs> him and John Atwood would scare the pants out of me, fire me in my pants. I'd be like, okay, I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Uh, and Tony Robbins, if you remember Tony, she was just a sweet lady and uh, just a passionate woman of God. And I love hearing her kind words. These people, this is why it's sad. Because after thinking, I've been here and established so many good relationships. But having a wonderful church that loves and supports you will get you through any hard times. Here's a couple of joys. And one of them is marrying Megan and doing ministry for the first time at this church. You can't take that away. Megan's been a blessing in my life. And for you guys to know her, she's been a blessing to you. She's made me look a lot better than I really am. Amen. <laughs> wow, William, thanks. Um, but I also want to tell you guys... Thank you. Um, over the years, we've had some great staff members like Pastor Dan, Pastor Mallory. Um, Betty will be mad at me when I say this, but I call her Betty Boo Boo Taylor. And so, Betty Boo Boo Taylor, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss Pastor Bill and Sherry a lot. And uh, I hope you guys know the blessing you have in Pastor Bill. Man. He has been the greatest. Um, I have been a staff member here eight years, and he's not really, he's my boss, but he's not really my boss. He's my friend. And he's like, he's like a father figure to me. Amen. One of those hard-nosed, slap me on the back of the head father figure. Um, <laughs> but I am thankful for him. And you guys are all blessed to have him as your leader. Amen. Amen. I also want to tell you guys, most importantly, you guys, thank you for your support and love over these you, years. Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have so many memories. Amen. Okay. Now we're done making emotional things. Let's get into the Word of God and have an emotional connection with Him. All right, if you have your Bibles, would you turn to John chapter 15, verse 1. And here is what the Word of the Lord says. I'll be reading through verse 3. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. How do you guys know the pruning process? You guys can continue to get there. I realize I just jumped pretty quick. Um, I will read a few more verses later. But the pruning process, how do you guys like the pruning process? No. How many of you guys like to be like pruned and be like, okay, God's telling you, or somebody in your life said, well, let's work on this issue. Let's work on this conversation. Let's work. No, no one likes to be pruned. 
But when we're pruned by the vine, it involves cutting down those small branches that don't need to be there. Yeah. So that the other branches can continue to grow and be fruit fruitful. You know, how do you guys know that um, branches, small and offset branches, take nutrients and sunset from the vine? <coughs> they are weak and they're not sturdy. By pruning those branches, it improves the fruitfulness of the vine, that there will be not decay. There won't be there won't be an impact on the vine. The vine has no use but bearing fruit. And when those small branches that are dead or not alive in your life, we need to prune them. God needs to prune them out of us. These small branches, because they cannot do nothing for the growth of your life. They can't build a building. They can't be carved because they're too small. They're too dead. They don't have a grand purpose. They can only be thrown out and burned. Jesus is saying that the person who does not abide in him is as useless as the branches that's thrown away. Jesus gets rid of the dead branches in our lives so that we can have fruit-bearing branches that may sharpen us and distinguish us and give us more room for growth. Amen. Without pruning, the growth of the vine has limited growth. The procedure of pruning, I hate it. And you do too, probably. It's painful. It's like, why? Why? That's how I feel. But it's something that God does because He loves you. And He sees the potential in you. Yeah. That's why He prunes us. He prunes us so that we can be better, healthier versions of ourselves. How many of you guys want to be versions of yourself 10 years ago? Okay. I don't see any hands raised. I'm just saying, I don't want to be versions of myself 10 years ago. I want to continue to be healthy and thriving in life. So the disciples already knew... That by, by the words that he meant by clean, the word spoken to them, now the Father also clean and pure, prune them. It is as we hear a response to God's words that we become more fruitful. You know what I think about? How many of you guys in prayer time are kind of like me, where I start praying to God and God starts speaking back saying, Drew, you did this wrong, or Drew, you need to check this, your attitude, your heart, things. And he starts to prune my, my mind, my attitude, because sometimes my attitude can get kind of, yeah, we have all been there, right? Our attitudes can get kind of ronky and ranch, and, you know, you can just treat people because your attitude is not in the right place. And God has many times said, Drew, check your heart. There's many times I've gone back to that person that I've hurt, and I've said, I'm sorry. You know, there's somebody else in my life who is... I call my prune checker, okay? That's going to be a new thing, prune checker. Um, checks me. He, she is my mother. My mother is not somebody who is like, she loves me, but she's also one that's going to be very honest with me yeah. and going to share some truth. I mean, there's many conversations over the last year. God, God has used her to prune some things in my life, and it's uncomfortable when your mom's calling out things about you. And she doesn't know much, but she's like, yeah, you need to prune this. You, God needs to deliver you. He needs to put his hand on it and touch that wound so you don't continue to live unhealthy. Because I'm going to tell you, when you have bad or dead branches in your life, it's only going to cause you to live in an unhealthy manner in a way that has not glorified God. That's right. Because if you're not connected to the vine, then we are not bearing fruit. Let me share that again. If we're not connected to the vine, we are not bearing fruit. Amen. You know, growing up, I had this house. We lived on a little. We lived on a little lake in a huge red house with this big tree. Let me tell you, this tree had so many dead branches. I don't know how my sister got out of picking up all these branches, but it was always my punishment. Probably because I was mean to my sister all the time. But my punishment was to go clean the branches out of the yard because my dad liked a really nice yard. He still does today. And so I'm pulling branches, and I was thinking as I was writing this message this week that you know. I'm, I'm pulling off branches from the tree. I'm picking up branches from the yard because dead and bad branches should not be living around the vine. Should not be coming because you know what? I'm helping the years to come to be healthier. Because pruning is never fun, but it's needed to be the healthier you. How many of you guys know that God is a good, good father? Amen. A good father does what's best for his children. He might not do what you think is best for you, but he'll do what's best for him. Amen. And for you as well. Jesus talks in the gospel that God doesn't give us a snake when, they are, when we ask for fish. Pruning and cutting off branches comes from our lives, doesn't always feel good. How many of you guys know that? It's not enjoyable. How many of you guys, your spouse prunes you a little bit? Or you have that, you know, okay, I'm not trying to get spouses or relationships in trouble, but I'm telling you, there's lots of times 
the more you, the longer you're married, the longer that your wife or husband wants to just make sure you're the best you, because they don't want to live with not the best you. Okay, so so God has cut off those branches, and they might not feel good, but if those aren't bearing fruit, then they're not bringing any value or substance to you. And you know what? Some of you might go, "Oh, I'm great with these dead branches because I feel comfortable." I'm going to tell you, as a believer, we should live the un- in the uncomfortable. Right. Because God should always be pruning us, making us healthier. You know, you don't call it whatever you want, but God knows in order for us to grow and become all that he's called us to be, he has to prune us and mold us. One of my favorite scriptures is, is in Isaiah 64, 8. It says, Yet you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of his hand, or your hand. You know, he does that because he loves us. Listen to that. He loves us. So when God is touching an area of your life, it's not because he's mad at you or he hates you or he thinks you're disgusting or he thinks you're worthless. No, he sees potential in you. He sees anointing in you. He sees something that he wants to work at so you can be the best you for this world. Because if we're not the best you, then we're never going to be a witness for the world around us. Let me tell you, I want, I want to be more like Jesus. And here's how I look at it, a statement that I've been saying lately. If I reflect Jesus, then the world sees Jesus. And when the world sees Jesus for who he really is, then the world's transformed because they see Jesus through me. The pruning has to take shape so you can be the best version of you. So you can be the best version to the world around it. you. Allowing pruning for fruitfulness is for you to thrive. All right, point number two, we're going to get into this. It's called Always Remain. In John chapter 15, verse 4, we're going to read through verse 6. And here's what it says. Remain in me as I remain in you. No branches can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Our fruitfulness is our relationship to the vine. The vine, which is Jesus. And we have to understand that we have to remain with Jesus. It's not a conversation of, okay, I got saved. I'm not trying to get into some theology today. But you get saved and you're good. No, it's a continual relationship with Him. I can't expect, like I said, to be 10 years ago. If I stayed the same, then I'm not growing. I'm not killing off the dead branches in my life because the more years you live, the more you will grow and the more healthier you become when God gets a hold of those things. And we have to remain in his word. We have to remain in his life. And we do that by hearing what God's saying, what Jesus is saying. The disciples part is to remain. That's our job. We are disciples of Christ. The word remain is a key word in John's theology. It's minio, which occurs 11 times in this chapter alone. 40 times in the Gospels, and 27 times in John. What does this word remain mean? It means to accept Jesus as your Savior. It means to continue and persevere in believing. And thirdly, having a loving obedience for God. Because without faith, no life of God will come to anyone. Without the life of God, no real fruit can be produced inside of you. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. In verse 5, it talks about the branches. The branches is us. We are the branches. Because if we don't stay connected to Jesus, which is the vine, we are not going to be in a good flow. We are not going to be healthy. You know, I look out today and I see a lot of friends. I see family. And you know what I see? I want you to be healthy. I want you to know who the vine is. And I want you to know how to stay connected. Because once you stay connected, it's your driving force. Where where in verse 5 it says, you can do nothing. Jesus is saying we can't have access to God without having access to Him. And we cannot bear fruit. All life-giving things require the source of life, which is Jesus. In any vine, the function of a branch is to bear fruit. But it cannot fulfill its purpose unless it remains in an intimate relationship with the vine. It will never be accomplished what it's designed for. How empty would our lives be if we failed to remain in Jesus? How empty is the branches torn from the vine because it has no potential bearing fruit? 
Here's the warning that he gives us in verse 5 and 6. We cannot become what we are intended to be without having a close relationship with Jesus, with our love for him expressed in obedience to him. How tragic is if branches fall and fail to experience the joy that comes as we fulfill our potential for bearing fruit. Okay. How many of you guys in this room have cables in your car? Jumper cables? Oh, yes. Okay. Here's another Pastor Bill story for you. <laughs> so the, I don't know why I don't remember things. I feel like I've got a lot of things in my head and I just can't remember how to use jumper cables. And uh, I have jumper cables in my car, but if you don't know how to use them, they're probably not very purposeful, right? right. They're just probably filling up a space. They're in the back of my truck underneath my seat. And I remember one, I remember, I remember about six months ago, I went to pastor and said, I got to go jump the bus. And he's like, you got cables? I was like, I got cables. He goes, do you know how to put them on? I go, yeah, I know how to put them on. A few minutes later, I walked in and go, nothing's happening. And he goes, did you put the positive on the negative and the negative on the positive? And I go, yeah. And he goes, should you take them off? And I go, probably. But I'm saying, if you don't know how to stay connected, you don't know how to get charged up, you're never going to be the healthy version of you. That's right. You know, us staying connected to Jesus is the most important thing. Amen. It's the only thing that gives me life and gives you guys life. Amen. Our connection to Jesus is the only thing that will get you through any moments of your life, good and bad. Amen. We have to stay connected to Him. Like I said, through reading this Word, this Word is powerful. This is one of my three Bibles I have. And it's really written on. And uh, there's other ones that I've had for 20 years that have notes in it. Because I, every time I read a word, I want God to speak to me what he's saying in the scripture. And I encourage you to do that same thing. And prayer and fellowship. You know, Proverbs 27, 17 says this. Iron sharpens iron. It talks about that. But when we are around believers and we are connected to Jesus, we are sharpening each other for the best. We are encouraging each other. Trust me, not everybody's going to have a good day. And that's why we stay connected to Jesus. So when somebody else is having a good day, we can feel off their connection. And we can just continue to get along with God. We have to be intentional about remaining in Jesus. Our connection to Jesus is our lifeline. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's, it's like a railroad track to me. Sometimes I think about it. There's different splits on railroad tracks. But you have to stay on the main channel. And if you're not on the main channel with Jesus... You're going to get off road. You're going to miss some marks. God has a plan for you. Our connection to God, our connection to Jesus has to be solid. No matter if you're going to have a good day or bad day, our connection to Him will get us through the moments Amen. where all hope is lost. Amen. The connection to Jesus needs to be a solid one. Unlike what I did a couple months ago, put a negative on a positive and a positive on a negative. Not what you should be doing, okay? Life lesson, car lessons. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Um, but I'm telling you guys, our connection to Jesus needs to be solid. It needs to be locked in. Because I'm telling you, when you don't spend time with Jesus, you might say, hey, I've had a, I've had a rough week or bad week, and I'm not going to spend time praying today. You start to notice. I had a friend say, hey, man, if I don't spend time with Jesus every day, I feel it. I feel it. I feel worn down. I feel angry. And his wife feels it, too. And uh, just feels that disconnected part. That's why we. That's why God says we need to stay connected to Him, and why He explains He is the vine and we are the branches. My last scripture I'm going to read today, and it's called to activate the fruit in your life. John fifteen seven says this: If you remain in Me and My words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it'll be done for you. This is to My Father's glory that you will bear much fruit, showing yourself to My disciples. The word prayer, the word in the scripture in verse 7 says to remain. It's a obedience to him by remaining in his presence. The places where we are sensitive to his leading and praying his will, God will answer those prayers. To those who remain in fellowship with Jesus by observing his teachings, he promised that they may ask whatever, you, whatever they wish will be given to them. Now, I feel like I'm going to say it right now. Just because you pray for a million dollar car or a nice house doesn't mean you're going to get it. Because it's talking about praying God's teachings. Praying for what He wants. You know, you can pray for anything. But expect that there won't be a nice Lamborghini in the you know, parking lot, okay? That's not what God... We're not praying selfish prayers. We're praying prayers of saying, God, I'm going to remain in you. I want to yes. be part of you. Amen. 
Jesus gave a similar promise concerning prayer, saying that he will do whatever his disciples ask of him in his name. Such promises are conditioned upon the prayer and the teaching of his word and in line with who God is. This is to give the Father glory that you must bear fruit. Disciples bring glory to God by bearing fruit. That's what we do. When we witness to somebody, we're bearing our fruit. We're seeing lives change. We're talking to co-workers. Are we bearing fruit? It's most likely the outcome of our life and ministry. You don't have to be a minister or a full-time ministry to continue to activate your fruit. Your ministry is where you go in your marketplace, in your work, in your jobs, in your family. That is your ministry. And as, they remain, as we remain in fellowship with Jesus by keeping his commands and experiences, his presence with them through the Holy Spirit. In our lives and ministry, when they reflect the character of God, then he is glorified as the people catch his glimpses of who truly he is, Jesus. As they bear this fruit, Jesus said them, you are showing yourself to be disciples. By how much fruit we bear, we are showing ourselves what kind of disciples we are. You know, I was thinking about a mission trip I went on when I was a junior in high school. I went to Mexico. And uh, this, this trip was an experience for me. I'd never been outside the country in my life. But God spoke to me. And I remember the interpreter got there and looked at me. Yeah, not much to look at, but um, looked at me and goes, do you have a disability? And I was like, yes, I have a disability. I was born with Sue Palsy. And she goes, can I take you tomorrow to go talk to a young man about your age who has Sue Palsy? And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I'm a junior. I'm a little, it's like 16 or 17. I'm a little scared right now. I'm like, okay. I know, I, I know what she's thinking, but I'm like, okay, God, you're in control. And I remember praying that night, God, do do something, God, do something. And I remember I walked in this room. There was like 25 of us. Everybody stayed out because no, only one person came in. So me and this interpreter went into this room, and this kid had a form of cerebral palsy that was so bad that he could not walk. And he was angry with the world. He was so upset. He was so disheartening. He was so mad at God. And the interpreter said, this is Drew. He has fruit palsy. And he looks at me and he goes, how? How is yours not bad? And why does God hate me? 17 year old trying to, I'm answering those questions for a young man. And I remember I just shared God with him. I remember it. I was activating my fruit. I was saying, God, you put me in this situation and you're going to see me through it. And I remember how angry, how upset he was. He was a drawler. He was an artist. He did some beautiful paintings that were around in this room. And he said, I haven't drawn it in a year because I hate God. And I am not going to ever show his creation again. And I said, you know what? God loves you. God healed me. I wasn't always like this. God touched my life. There was a miracle that happened a couple years before that. And God did something. I said, God can do something to you. And I started praying for him. And as I started praying for him, he was still angry, but his demeanor changed a little bit. His heart started to listen. And after 20 minutes, because the interpreter, was, this was a family member of hers, and she goes, I'm not letting you out of this room until he gets saved. And I'm like, okay, God, this is all about you. And I, and 25 minutes later, I'm still praying for him. I'm still talking to him. He said, I will accept Jesus because I see the Jesus in you. And I want to experience the Jesus that you have experienced in your life. And I remember I got home a couple weeks later and the leader of the mission trip followed up and said that his demeanor had changed. He was drawing again. He was doing artistic stuff. His life was changed because of one simple person. Because God used me and I activated my fruit. And I'm telling you today it's about activating your fruit so God can have encounters with people who need him. I'm going to tell you. God wants to have an encounter with all your friends and all your family and all your co-workers. And you might be that person who uses. You know what? Rob, you can come on up to the stage. You know, Jesus is saying that as results of us remaining in him, whatever we ask for in prayer, it will be done. Like I said, God's not saying what we pray for, we're going to get. It means that when we allow God to prune us and we remain in him, then we are so in tune with the Holy Spirit. And what we pray for is the heartbeat of heaven. And at the heartbeat of heaven, God will answer in his timing. There's lots of prayers I've prayed that have not been answered, but I know they're God's prayers. And they will get answered in God's timing. Jesus is all about our lives being fruitful. What fruit do you want to come from your life? Love, hate, 
joy success. When we allow God to prune us and cut things out of our life that aren't bearing fruit, then we have to remain in Him. We can bear good fruit. Paul in Galatians says this, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When we spend time with Jesus, we have His heart for our family, our friends, our church, our community, our neighbors. What fruit do you want to come from your life today? What do you need to do so that fruit can grow? Is it spending more time in His Word and less watching sports? Thanks, Megan. And uh, watching TV or being on your phone? Is it putting down something that you really love so you can just spend a few moments with God and get a hold of what He has? I have never been disappointed when I put down things that are of this world to get more of God. Is it forgiving someone who has hurt you? Is it spending time praying for somebody that you need to forgive today? Because the fruit needs to be increased in your life and you need to lay down those things so fruit can be increased. As I thought about how to close this service today, I thought of simply of giving people an opportunity to hear the gospel. To hear about who the vine is and who the branches are. If I can leave you with one last parting word, it's that we are only as good as our connection to the vine is. We are only as good as our connection with Jesus is. Everything else doesn't matter. Because I've built a lot of great friendships and relationships here that make me sad to leave. But I know that your connection to Jesus is what's going to sustain all of us. Your connection to Jesus is what's most important in your life. I'm going to do something a little differently. I I want every eye, I don't I don't want you to close your eyes today. Because I pastor the one thing that in all seriousness, pastor has pressed upon my heart these last eight years is accepting Jesus is not just an experience it's a journey it's something that you're going to go through the experience is you get to accept him and you get to know him the journey is it's not always going to be easy it's not always going to be fun but it's always good to stay connected so in every every eye open I'm going to do an invitation today where I'm going to ask you, if you have never accepted Jesus into your heart, you say, hey, I've never known who this Jesus, who this vine is, then I want to give you an opportunity to. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Every, I just feel like with every eye open, you're making not just a commitment to all of us in this room. You're making a commitment to Jesus. Amen. You're saying, God, I want to follow you like I've never followed you before. Maybe some of you in this room said, hey, I've fallen off the wagon. I've fallen off the, I've fallen off the rails, and I just need to rededicate. I need to resubmit to him. Because let me tell you, when our connection, if you've ever been in a vehicle where the battery's about to die, that connection gets short, and it won't turn over to start the car. Or if you're driving, you start feeling some things, which happened to me years ago. But I'm going to tell you guys something. If our connection is strong, then you can get through anything. And if you have a church who loves you and supports you, you can get through anything. People come and go, but the church of God never leaves. It's as strong today as it will ever be, and it'll be stronger tomorrow. So I want to encourage you. If you want to accept Jesus, I would just like you to put your hand up in faith and say, I'm, I want to accept Him. I want to, I want to, I want to go after Him. Because I don't want you to be scared. If you're like, oh, all the eyes are looking at me. No, it's, it's about letting God do a work in your heart. Amen. I'm going to give a couple more seconds. Because I believe in what God's doing in this room. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. For this amazing church, for this amazing pastor, Pastor Bill and Sherry, I thank you for this amazing congregation. Lord Jesus, I pray that your hand would bless them. 
tenfold, a hundredfold, God, let blessing and favor just pour out upon them, God. Let our connection to you stay as strong today as it will tomorrow and continue to get stronger and stronger, God, as we stay connected to the vine. Lord, I pray, God, over their week, Lord, I pray over their lives, and Jesus, I pray, Lord, that your hand would just bless them and guide them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you all leave, we're going to do something a little special. If you are a veteran or served in our military, I want you to come up on, come up in front. I want to pray for you today. Veterans Day is on Thursday, the 11th, and we just want to pray over our veterans in this room. We want to thank you for the service. Yeah, go ahead. You guys can thank you for your donation. We we have something for you. Betty will come up and hand them to you. But I want to thank you guys for serving our country. Amen. Because you put your life on the line. And you have friends and family that maybe didn't make it back. And, you know, I thank you for doing your call. I thank you for serving your country. A lot of you up here I know, and I'm appreciative of who you guys are. So let me just pray. Congregation, will you just extend your right hand to them? And let's just pray over them. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that these men and women have made in this room. God, to serve this amazing country, this beautiful country. Lord Jesus, I pray over their lives, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just continue, God, to bless these men and these women in this room, God, that served wholeheartedly and served unconditionally with a passion for America, Father God, to bring freedom into this world, to keep freedom into this world. So, Lord Jesus, I pray for each man and woman in this room, God, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would anoint them. Lord, let this be a year of favor. God, I pray, Jesus, Lord, that you would, God, just continue to bring life into them, God, restore the things that have been lost to them, Lord. God, I pray, Jesus, that your hand would just bless them, anoint them. God, we thank you, God, for the veterans all around the country, Jesus, that have served. And Lord, we thank you. And it's an honor and it's a privilege to bless them and to praise them and to thank them, Father. Lord, I give you all the honor and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You guys are always with